Yo 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 guys, what's going on? My name is Hacking is Freeman, and thanks for joining me on this first episode of What Was Cut, a new series I'm going to try on my channel where we find out exactly what was cut in our favorite games. So we're starting episode 1 with The Simpsons Hit and Run, so grab your pink frosted donuts, mmm, donuts, and let's get started. And a quick disclaimer guys, this video would have been out much sooner, but I sadly got really, really sick. You can probably still hear it a bit in my voice. Anyway, let's get into it. Since the game starts us off in a mission, let's talk about some unused or altered missions as there really aren't that many to cover. The very first mission in the game, called SMRT, requires you to deliver Lisa's science project. However, if you know the show, that isn't quite correct. You're actually delivering Bart's science project from Season 10, Episode 14, I'm with Cupid. Looks great, Mom. Some of your best work. Oh, it sounds so real. I didn't turn it on yet. But they originally planned to feature Lisa's actual science project from Season 4, Episode 16, Duffless, which was the giant tomato. Fair project. Yeah, syrup is better than jelly. I've grown a futuristic tomato by fertilizing it with anabolic steroids. Here's a quick mod to show what it would have looked like in game. Only the hot icon is left in the code. Only Lisa left for It's crashing time. <laughs> The next mission that was altered is on level 5, and it's called Kinky Frinky. Originally, you were supposed to drive to the sit and rotate to locate the hover car, but in the final game, the car just spawns near you after talking to Professor Frank. The code for this is actually still fully functional, and it's just commented out in the script file. Here's a clip of the restored mission compared to the final mission. Hopefully my store will not be robbed more than four times while I am driving around today. This last change is only a mission icon, but it would have appeared in multiple different missions. For some reason, there's a completely unused icon for the Springfield Power Plant parking lot. There are a few instances where you actually have to drive to this parking lot specifically, so it's kind of strange that this goes unused. Here's a clip of what it would have looked like in-game. I used the mission There's Something About Monty to show you both the parking lot and the power plant icons. Piece of cake. Come in. 
retribution. Next up we have unused models and really there's only a few that are interesting. I'll quickly show you them here. So we have an ice cream cone that was used somewhere in level 1. A very early model of the wasp cameras you destroy around Springfield. Chaps, a miner hat, and this book were all used as pickups for a scrapped bonus mission in level 7 called Flaming Tires, where you had to gather personal items for Smithers instead of Mr. Burns. This can still be modded into the game files as a pickup, however, they have no other functionality. And lastly, there's an unused model of a mouse. My personal guess is, this was going to be used somewhere for some sort of gag, but it never got implemented. While still on the topic of unused models, we're going to go over some unused vehicles. Surprisingly, all these vehicles can still be used in the final game with some simple modding. I'll quickly show you a clip of the model in a model viewer, and then I'll show you what they look like in-game and being driven around. Okay, first up is Wagon A, and while uncertain, it's believed that this car was supposed to show up in level 1 as a traffic vehicle in place of the crusty glass truck. Next we have an ice cream truck, and oddly enough, this car is not mentioned in the traffic data for any level, meaning this was never supposed to spawn with an AI driving it. It's believed this was once used as a special vehicle spawn for level 1 according to an early development link. It may have also been an early placeholder for Chester J. Lampwick's rocket car. Sedan A was supposed to appear in level 1's traffic in place of the school bus, however I'm sure this was just a placeholder. This vehicle was also supposed to appear in level 2 and 5, making its true purpose really unknown. These next three cars are all leftovers from the mission sellouts from level 2. We have Lavender, Beige, and Cyan. It looks like they wanted to use these three unique colors to differentiate the four total cars you need to take down, but I'm assuming due to the console's memory at the time, they just couldn't get this to work well so they had to cut them. This beige one is the only one that actually has a unique ringtone. This cube truck I thought was pretty interesting, and this is actually the first time I've personally seen it. So this truck was originally found on a press release asset disc under the section AI controlled vehicles. So it's definitely safe to say that this was once used in the mission or as a type of traffic vehicle. The Bone Storm and Duff trucks are both retextured versions of this vehicle, so I wonder if this was used as an early placeholder.
Last up on our cut cars list is my personal favorite and one of the most mysterious. It's an Audi TT, and it's completely unknown why this car is here to begin with. But if I had to guess, it was probably used for scaling purposes. To see how the characters would look in the vehicle, the vehicle itself in the world space, but then again, that's just my speculation. While these next two cars aren't technically unused, but I thought it would still be cool to show you them anyway. The first one being the red brick car. This was confirmed to be a test car by the game's lead programmer, Kerry Brisbois, which is why the Audi TT is still a mystery. There was also a much earlier model of the red brick car left over in the game's code. Sadly, there's no vehicle data left, so it cannot be driven. However, you can still use this code here on screen if you want to try the red brick car out for yourself. And last, but certainly not least, we have a car that you guys have certainly seen before. It's a car that I like to call the Baby Van. I'm sure you remember this level from the Mission 8 is too much in level 5. But there's not much to say about this vehicle other than its godlike strength. You can literally get crushed by the trains in level 2 and 5 about 8 to 10 times before this thing even starts to emit smoke. I have no idea why this is so strong outside of the scripted mission, but it's very fun to fuck around with. Next up, we have a short list of some unused characters. So, first up, we have Max Guevara, and she is a character from James Cameron's Dark Angel. And my guess is, this is simply a leftover because Radical Entertainment was also developing that very same game for the PS2. Next, we have this model of Homer. And this is rumored to be an early model from The Simpsons Road Rage. You can tell it's an earlier model by the color of his muzzle and the lack of hair on the back of his head. Here's a fun little fact. This model was actually used in the title screen and in cutscenes in earlier beta versions of The Simpsons Hit and Run. There's not much to say about this kid, other than he was obviously planned to be used as an NPC in level 7. He shares his voice lines with the other male NPC children found in levels 1 to 6. So perhaps he was cut because the developers didn't have enough time to make custom voice lines for him, or they may have totally forgot to add them. Last up, we have Agnes and she was fully planned to be an NPC walking around in level 3. She has this 3D high poly version and many unused voice lines. Which actually leads me into our next section, unused voice lines. Now there are a ton of voice lines that are not used in this game, and for obvious reasons I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but just the ones that I think that are the most notable or funny. Alright, since we left off on Agnes, we'll start with her voice lines first. She has four voice lines of her being hit by the player's car. Oh great, now I need new hips again! Snot-nosed kids! You think that hurt? You couldn't hurt me with a cruise missile! Why, you ill-mannered sack of crap! Four getting kicked by the player. You wanna rumble? Bring it on! Thanks a lot, you idiot! Is that all you got? You wouldn't know what to do with me! And three nearly getting hit by the player's car. Get back here, you thin-lipped sissy! Yeah, put me out of my misery. I'm a defenseless old lady, you rat sucker! Obviously, we have to follow up Agnes with Principal Skinner. These first three are unused voice lines of Skinner driving and hitting other cars. <laughs> that was my nearest miss yet. Drive by again so I can spit on the loser. Fine, mother. That person gave me a dirty look. Next time, hit him good. Whatever you say, mother. And these last two are when Skinner fails a mission. You and or your children will pay for this. If I didn't have a truck-related stress injury, I'd have won. Next up we have... Jeff Elbertson, but better known as Comic Book Guy. And sadly, he only has two voice lines worth hearing. Both are related to him driving and almost hitting things. Beat it, you half-elf! Oh, way to almost die, idiot! Next, we have Lisa with two unused voice lines, both relating to her nearly getting run over. Since Lisa is never an NPC you can hit with a car, these voice lines never get played. That is assault! That is assault! Don't think I won't sue! Now, Cletus has quite a few unused voice lines I thought were interesting. He's also one of the characters that have the most cut voice lines. These first two here are related to him driving around and nearly missing pedestrians. I'm powerful, sorry. Whoa, you is almost roadkill, boy. We got two of him damaging his car, or when their player hits it. Oh, I done spilt my corn liquor. Hey, I paid ten chickens for this car. 
Two of him losing a mission, and also two winning a mission. Oh, double dang it! For the first time in my life, I feel like a loser. Wow, how'd I do that? I win! I'm going to celebrate with some possum pie! And the final one is kind of a mystery as where it was supposed to be played, but judging by the file name, it was supposed to play in a mission, or a cutscene of some sort. Oh, I'm feeling road rage here. Next up we have Chester Turley, better known as Snake. And he has the best cut voice lines in my opinion. The first three we have are of him nearly running over pedestrians. Oh, I almost greased that guy. Out of my way, walking statistic. Look out, rude pizza! Three of him getting his car damaged. My ride! She cries in pain! Oh, you are so dead! Do you know what I had to do to get this car? And these last three are of him losing a mission. It looks like it's back to prison for me. I am so going to shank you. At least most of my crimes were victimless. Obviously, we need to follow up a criminal with the chief of police. I mean, the beef with no cheese. Anyway, he's got some funny voice lines, too. These first two are related to if the player damaged his car. Don't make me use this thing, because I will. Oh, now I have to chase ya. These three are related to him losing a mission, or possibly these were meant to be played if you outran Chief Wiggum during Hit and Run. Fine. I'll just arrest someone else for your crime. Next time, I'll just taser you. Suspect believed to be driving an airship of some kind. Have lost contact with suspect, taking nap. And this last one was supposed to be used when a mission timer reaches 10 seconds or less. Come on, come on! I'm gonna be late for a beating! Next up we have Homer, and sadly there are about only three interesting voice lines. Two are meant for missions in level 7, the first one being for rigor mortars. Now to kick some zombie butt! With a little help from my most psychotic friend, Mo. And this one being for Alien Autotopsy. Uh-oh, it's that evil black car. I've got to get that waste before he wastes me. And this last one was meant to be used when you get busted in level 7. I have an idea on why this wasn't used. <laughs> Ow, my ass! Next we have Auto Man, and he's one of the characters with sadly the least amount of cut voice lines. These first three are Ida replies, meaning if Otto were an NPC walking around, he would have respond with these. But since this is the only mission with Otto being an ambient character, these never get used. I can feel my hair growing. Hey, my old lady isn't a stripper. She's a dancer and a prostitute. Whoa, my shoes are talking to me. The final two voice lines are of him driving. Get out of the way, man! Yeah, I'm the greatest bus driver in all of Springfield. Well, the only one. Next in the list, we got the crazy old man himself, Grandpa Simpson. And all his voice lines relate to him driving and nearly hitting things. My personal favorite, and I think funniest, is the last option. Dance, pilgrim! Damn leprechauns! Sure beat sitting at home watching Oprah. I see young people. We've made it to the final two people that have unused voice lines, and these are all the unused NPCs that drive cars. We're gonna start with the females first. These first five are of them reacting to the player hitting their car. Sure, I didn't need that eye. Thank God I'm an attorney. I blame video games. And Canadians. I'm all dead inside. Not my generic car! This one is related to you kicking a girl? Stop enjoying this! And this last one is if they get stopped in traffic, or if your body block their car. Lousy minor inconvenience. And now the males. Once again, these first six are of them reacting to the player hitting their car. My face! Where is it? Great, that's just great. My kidneys and my lymph nodes! My legs are over there! Ah! Ah! Scalding coffee! On my crutch. The last two are related to the player body blocking their car or getting stopped in traffic. Don't make me get my board with a nail in it. What's the big idea? And we're finally done with the unused voice lines. Oh man. 
I hope you're not sick of sounds yet, because next up we have unused sound effects. But no worries, there's really not that many to go over, so it'll be quick. So there were four sounds that were supposed to play in level 7. The first one being a ghost loop. And my guess is this was supposed to play in the background at random times, just to add to the spooky atmosphere. Take a listen. These two are ghostly versions of the voice lines children use when almost getting run over. I once again have no idea why these were never used. These sound pretty cool. You better run! You're dead meat! And the last one on the list for spooky sounds is the sound effects for the spiders that fall down from the trees. I once again have no idea why this wasn't implemented, but my guess was time restraints and the developers just simply forgot. This next sound was supposed to play when entering or exiting Bumblebee Man's car. It was probably removed because it got really annoying. And last up on our unused sound list is this early version of the Roadkill pickup. Here's what the retail sounds like. And here's what the unused sound effect sounds like. It definitely had a more gruesome sound. Alright, after all those sounds, let's change it up and let's get back into some unused textures. First up, we have an unused texture for the Buzz Cola machines. And I'm pretty sure this texture was used in early beta builds. Kang and Kodos were supposed to appear above the game's credits, but due to a developer oversight, they never do. There are two versions of the generic sports car driven by NPCs left over in the game's code. For some odd reason, there's an image of the Spooky Mart used for the collection book showing the actual Spooky Mart sign. No idea why this wasn't added to the final game, but it was more likely just an oversight by the developer and they forgot to swap out the original sign with this one. There's also an early version of the Krusty Glass texture seen in beta screenshots. There's a beta version of the Car Husk left over from an earlier build. There's a podium that was supposed to be used for the racing bonus game. And last but not least, there's an early version of Gil's showroom. And our final category we're going to talk about today is the very few unused maps. This first one is a test track used for the bonus minigame. We know that due to its simple design and the fact that it uses the stop sign texture for its walls. This next one is just an oval speedway, but it resembles the one seen in the episode Alone Again Natural Diddly. This can actually still be loaded into the game by swapping out map chunk data, although it will usually crash the game. This next one technically isn't a map, but it's still partially unused, and it's pretty iconic, so I figured I had to leave it in. This is the Mr. Burns Mansion interior from level 1. It's slightly different than the one seen in level 4, and it was most likely available in earlier builds, but it got cut due to time restraints. Last up in the list is this bump test map, and my personal guess is this was used to test the functionality of the bonus game's jumps and level design, but I could be wrong. And that's all I have on The Simpsons Hit and Run. I know this was a long one, but thank you guys so much for watching and making it to the end. I wanted to put a lot of effort into this first episode because I grew up on this game, and it's been one of my personal favorite games for years now. I think I was about 6 or 7 when this game first released, and I still remember little me sitting cross-legged on the floor and playing this game for hours on end. Great times, I swear. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace. I'm sorry if I pronounced anything wrong or weirdly. I'm still sick.